In this video, we will continue with parametric differentiation. You will find this on page 505 in the Namibia AS level mathematics textbook y equals mx plus c to success. Let's look at another example. The parametric equations of a curve are x equals 2 cos 2 theta plus 3 sin theta, y is equal to 3 cos theta, for theta bigger than zero and smaller than a half pi. Find the gradient of the curve at the point for which theta is one radian. Okay, now first we're going to differentiate. Now if we differentiate this dy over d theta, remember this is very easy, it's just minus sin theta. Okay, in this one dx over d theta, this, what is cos, and I can take you back if you can recall, can I just show you where, on the previous, I'm going to make it a bit bigger, that you see better, and there it is. Okay, so if it's cos 2, then it's negative 2 sin, okay, so let's just go, then it was negative 2 sin 2 theta, and then sin is easy, and that's just cos, okay, and then I simplify. And now, don't forget that the x1 I will turn around. So it will be d theta over dx. Then I turn it around. Then I multiply and I get this. Okay, so this is my derivative function. This is my differentiated function. So when theta is 1 radiant, I just substitute 1 in. And I can basically just put my calculator on the radiant mode, uh, mode and just press. Negative 3 sin 1. 3 cos 1, okay, it's good if you put a bracket there. Uh, 3 cos 1 minus 4 sin 2, close the bracket, equals, and you get this answer. Okay, now, find the value of sin theta at the point on the curve where the tangent is parallel to the y-axis. Okay, now, before I'm starting with the sum, I just want to go through this note. Now, it's a bit challenging to explain it because you are not doing all um, limits on this level but let me just show you a very basic thing and just show you this okay let's just make first i just want to get a straight line okay and there there is my whatever curve let's just make it okay it's not on okay, there it is there is my curve Okay, so the first one is if I'm going to a tangent parallel to the x-axis. Remember, this is the x-axis. Okay, then, then this is what we are used to, because then the gradient, what is the gradient? The gradient is zero. Okay, and that's why we always put it zero over one. And actually, as soon as we cross multiply, let's rather do it like this as soon as we cross multiply it was the numerator multiply this one okay but it this is what it it's the the numerator um, was equal to zero okay so if we multiply then then it was ending up with actually just getting the numerator and it's equal to zero okay because if you multiply this two it will be equal to zero okay but now, if I say parallel to the y-axis, I just want to see what color I didn't use. So parallel to the y-axis will be this. Will something be like this? Because that is parallel to the y-axis. But what is this gradient? Now, the thing with this gradient, and this is the problem, it is division by zero and it's undefined. Okay, and then we go into limits and then it becomes complicated on this level to explain. So what you can remember, as soon as they say it's exceptional, it's, it's more parallel to the, to the um, x-axis, but if they say parallel to the y-axis, then you're just going to take the denominator and put it equal to z. Okay, so just remember that. So I'm taking this, now the tangent is parallel to the y-axis, so I'm taking the denominator instead where I would have usually saying the numerator is equal to zero. It's now the denominator that will be equal to zero. And that's what I got there. And then I simplify 
I just divide. Um, so in this case, I divide cos theta, and then, oh, don't forget, and, and you can see it again if you go to the next part. This is your double, your double, let's just go again. The double of the sin, there, do you see that? Okay, so let's just go back. So it's two sin, and this is what I'm putting in. So as soon as you see double, chapter 10, bring it in, then things can cancel out, and we end up with this. And then to get sin theta, let's just read the question again. Find the value of sin theta. Do you see there? And I show you there. Sin theta. Okay. And then can I go up? So sin theta will be equal to 3 over. Okay. Uh, because as soon as I divide by that too. Okay. I want you to stop the video. And I want you to do number 1. There is number 1. Again, you can continue the video as soon as you are finished. So this little block here, this is very important. It's really going to help you. Okay, so let's start. Number one. Prove that the curve by parametric equations, okay, x is equal to t to the power of 3, my, oh, let's just go again, correct, t to the power of 3 minus 3t squared plus 7t and then y is equal to 5t squared plus 1. Okay, now I'm going to differentiate. So dx over dt is going to be 3t squared minus 6t plus 7. So dy over dt is equal to 10t. Okay. Now, don't forget that this one I swap around. So, dt over dx. Remember, this is over 1. So, it's 1 over 3t squared minus 6t plus 7. So, therefore, dy over dx is equal, if I multiply, this is over 1, then it's 10t over 3t squared minus 6t plus 7. Okay, there is my derivative function. And now I go on. Um, prove that the curve with has no tangent which is parallel to the y-axis. Now, what did we say? If it's parallel to the y-axis, so which is good, if parallel to y-axis, then we are going to say the denominator, denominator is equal to zero. So therefore, there's the denominator of the um, differentiated function. 3 squared minus 60 plus 7 is equal to 0. Okay. Now, as soon as you say that they say proof uh, has no, then you actually know that the roots will be non-real. You, you have this. Now, I can just work out the discriminant. But I think for to make more sense in this video, I'm going to work out, I'm going to try to factorize this. Now, I cannot factorize, but then I can go for the formula. That's minus b plus minus b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Okay, so it's negative, and in the place, this is b, remember, can I just show you again? Okay, this is b, oh, sorry, I just want to get incorrect. Okay, this is B. This is A. Grab that sign. This is C. Okay, so it's going to be negative, and then don't forget your bracket. So it's negative 6 plus minus, and now I go for B squared. So it's negative 6 squared minus 4, and A is 3, and C is 7. 
over 2a. And that will give you 6 plus minus, and now I'm just going to get that 36 minus 84. And there you see it over 6. So it's going to be 6 plus minus, and if I subtract that to negative 48. And, and you cannot get a negative square root. It's, it's going to be uh, give you that non-real number. So you, if you were just working out the square root, and I just want to show you, if you just said b squared minus 4ac, you could. It comes from chapter 1, nature of the roots, and then negative. So you say, therefore, therefore, the discriminant is smaller than 0, so no real roots so that means no solution and that actually just means the curve um, therefore the curve has no tangent parallel to the y axis. Okay, and that's how you do it.